His son Raymond Jr. was just 22 when he was killed by the paramilitary group, the Ulster Volunteer Force. It's now been 19 years since Raymond McCord buried his eldest son at this graveyard in northern Belfast. I never heard of him being in trouble. He uh, went out, he came home, he's always laughing, smiling. The, uh, the, everybody thinks about their own kids. Over 3,600 people were killed during the Northern Ireland Troubles. What's unusual about Raymond McCord's case is that those thought to be responsible for the killing are known to the police. They belong to the loyalist UVF paramilitary group that still controls residential areas in Belfast. The man thought to have ordered the killing, Mark Haddock, was reportedly an informer for the British police. He tipped off the authorities about planned bomb attacks and other vital details. McCord believes that's why he has never been convicted for Raymond's murder. He's fought for years to get Haddock and others brought before a court and has written a book about his story. He believes the police are simply protecting their informers. 19 years from Raymond's murder, we haven't had an inquest. The police keep saying what, what they tell journalists, it's all going to invest the case. 19 years. You know, that's a part of the cover-up. But he and his lawyer are not giving up. They are even appealing to Britain's Supreme Court to try and get Brexit overturned. They believe that with the UK in the European Union, there's more pressure on the authorities to investigate the crimes of the Northern Ireland conflict. So what, what I have to do now is I'll leave this up in the Court of Appeal office. What we believe is that if there's a Brexit, then the next natural step for the UK government is to withdraw from the European Convention on Human Rights. There's already been some discussion on a UK Bill of Rights. So if that is the case, then no, we wouldn't have that option of going to the, um, the courts in Europe. But McCord and his lawyer have powerful opponents. Many in Northern Ireland's parliament voted for Brexit. And the democratic decision has been taken. And it's not for individuals like Mr McCord to hold up their puny hand and try and thwart that. We, we should be pulling together to make a huge success, as it will be, of Brexit and to embrace the opportunities. McCord fears that Brexit could further deepen the divisions in Northern Ireland. The scars of the past are still very evident here. Huge walls divide the Catholic and Protestant areas. McCord has often received death threats because of his outspoken criticism of the loyalist paramilitaries and his refusal to let the murder of his son rest. No problems are in the car. I was to walk up and down here and these people at the other side of the road would see me from the, the Shankill area. There's a great possibility a couple of car loads of guys would come down looking for me. McCord regularly meets with relatives of other murder victims from the Northern Ireland conflict. Kieran Fox's father was killed over 20 years ago. He too spent years trying to get the case brought to court, but to no avail. Once again, the suspected murderer was said to be a police informer. My father was 42 when he died. He was, just as Raymond said earlier, he was just shot for being a Catholic. Just sacrificed to keep the state agents on started just to hold on to the state agent, my father and Joe's son, Gary, were both sacrificed. My father was he had six kids, and I was the eldest. So he had a big impact. Yeah. The police lied to these families and have continued to lie to them. You know, it's not just about it's not about people turn around and it's about it's just about me and my son. It's it's, it's nothing like that. It's part of all of us together. McCord believes the European Court of Human Rights is his last hope of seeing his son's murderers brought to justice. Now he hopes Brexit won't get in his way.